welcome to another one of these highly questionable gatherings. What do you like on the show today, Bomani? Oh, Roger Goodell, boss is picking all you now. Dale, papi. Was it smart for Mike Tomlin and Big Ben to come out and criticize Antonio Brown? I think it's inconsequential, but they came down hard on him with words, and that's as hard as they're going to come down on him because they need him. But Mike Tomlin said it was selfish, and it was inconsiderate, and it was foolish. It was probably all of those things. And Ben Roethlisberger said he was a little disappointed by it on his radio show. I just don't see the point of this. We keep punishing honesty. We let NFL films in there, and we give them access, and then we allow the teams to edit it for us and show us what they want, which is how we come about Andy Reid dabbing in the locker room. But one guy does it on his own, and everybody gets bent out of shape. Yeah, but Tomlin's right about this, because one thing to consider is everything you say about this guy giving us access. He wasn't out on some journalistic pursuit, man. He was just out here, like Ryan Clark said, all in there. Antonio Brown to the brand of Antonio Brown and didn't think about anything else. It's not that big a deal, but Tomlin had to come out and assert his authority to everybody because people are like, he wasn't even listening to you as a coach. How many of them damn speeches can you hear before you feel like you've heard every speech there is? If not listening, not a big deal. Funniest part of this, though, Ben Roethlisberger saying he really wishes Antonio Brown would have been listening to the coach and myself. None of us even knew that you had talked, but Ben Roethlisberger wanted to make sure you knew. I, I, you know, I, I, I said something. One of the things that I find interesting here about the construct is that you've got Mike Tomlin. His salary is not salary cap. They can pay him whatever he wants, and he makes less money than Antonio Brown. He is there to help Antonio Brown. He is an ally and a supporter. We keep thinking of him as in charge, but he can't really do anything about this. Boy, Antonio got the message. He said, I could carry these two guys on my shoulder every game, and I get paid like this? Wait until you see what happened next game if you don't retract your statement. That's what he's going to say. I'm going to start dropping some of those things, you know? If he does that, he better not even show up to Pittsburgh to move his stuff out the house. Just go buy new stuff, Miami. How much did last night's Warriors beat down of the Cavs really matter? I mean, the Cavs are at the end of their road trip. They even said they were considering benching LeBron James and Kyrie Irving and Kevin Love. Ha ha, like the league was ever going to go for that one. But the Warriors beat the brakes off them last night. How much that matters? I mean, how much did it matter last year when the Warriors were beating the Cavs so badly the Cavs wound up firing their head coach and changing their whole approach to basketball on the fly? It's not encouraging if you're the Cavs, but this isn't going to matter when June comes. It is totally inconsequential, but the part that I hate about this is all of a sudden we all have perspective about these things. I miss the beginning of the Miami Heat so much when every game like this mattered in an enormous reverberating way. Now we know that none of these regular season games, we've always known that, but now we know it doesn't matter any of what it is that we're watching. Wouldn't have mattered if the Cavs had won by 40, and it doesn't matter that the Warriors do. No, that's the strangest thing about this. You remember game by game how we did this with the Heat when they came together. The Warriors have been about as good as we thought they were going to be, and nobody's paying any attention. I miss it. I miss us having having no perspective whatsoever. Well, I don't care. I don't care what you guys say. I know that gave me immensely. Yeah, of course you I did. mean, I they got the ball away from LeBron and yeah. Steph Curry. Then Damon Green came in and leveled the LeBron. Yes. And then Kevin Durant and stopped him at the rim. You know, he looked like he was lost there. I enjoyed every second. And to top it off, Jabal McGee. Oh. He crashed the board and he got a big putback, buddy. I, I couldn't ask for a better game. As much as JaVale McGee doesn't like our show, he doesn't understand. No one likes you more than him. What a hater. How should parents feel today about letting their kids play football for Oregon? All right, Oregon hired a new coach, Willie Taggart. Very often when new coaches get hired, you feel like you got to whip these entitled players into shape. Well, apparently they whipped them into something because players had to go to the hospital because they were ill to the point of approaching kidney failure with these rigorous workouts that have been compared to military basic training. Should it make you think twice about sending your kids to Oregon? Of course it should make you think twice about sending your kids to Oregon because it makes you ask a very simple question. Is winning that much more important to you than, you know, whether my kid might die or not? These things are infuriating whenever you read about them for a number of different reasons. Keep in mind, some of these kids for an hour were doing push-ups nonstop and burpees where you get up and down off the floor, and some of them had discolored urine, and three of them had to be hospitalized. And you get into these situations. Why? Because the player is totally powerless. This doesn't even happen in the pros among the pros because they've got a union to represent them that will not allow this stuff. So the only way you get away with this is when you have the powerful abusing the powerless. 
Is Philadelphia Odell being a chicken by not going to Foxborough again this weekend? He went to Atlanta last weekend and enjoyed himself so much. Enjoyed the meals and the hotel, the accommodations, the drivers that he decided, you know what? I'm going to go back there. There's no reason for me to go to Foxborough. And obviously this is because of how he would be received in Foxborough. But I can't say I blame him, Bomani. He doesn't want to become the story. There's only one stadium he could go to this weekend where he becomes part of the story, and it's that one. It's also worth noting, worst case scenario for him would be to go to Boston and then have the Steelers win and then be out there presenting the trophy as you would have angry Patriots fans as opposed to happy ones. But let's be fair to Raj Goodell on this one. You got two choices. You can stand outside in Boston or you could be inside in Atlanta. I ain't going to Boston to show you how tough I am, right? Like, I ain't Bud Grant. I ain't going up there in no polo shirt just standing around in the cold so you can see I ain't scared. No, sir, Reebok. Come on down to Atlanta where they got a roof. Can I say something to Fidel Goldell? You always ask permission and yeah, then ignore me. Guys. You do anyways, whether we tell you or not. Go ahead. Now oh, there it is. There it is. Right. I don't know what bird that was. Know, a very Stop angry being one. A chicken. And one that was having trouble breathing. Is that a vulture? Coming up next on my son Stevie show, we talk to James Worthy. Fair to say that Michael Jordan tried to bully you at North Carolina? He did. He didn't try. He did. Joining us at the beach today is James Worthit. Worthy. He's also worth it. He's a Hall of Famer. He's probably got some good Showtime Lakers stories. Wouldn't give us any of them last time. How about this time? Last time you were on with us, you refused to tell us any of the good stories involving the Showtime Lakers that we wanted. So I just want a true or false to this. True or false that when the parties were at Magic's house, he would order that everybody be getting busy by midnight or they had to be getting out of his mansion. True or false? I I'm having trouble. Oh, my God. All right. All right. We'll all right. All right. We'll take Lost it as a true. All right. The, the connection went suddenly bad. All the questions were fine I, until now, but you can't hear us so well. Second. Right, we'll take that. Second. We'll take that as a true. Oh, okay. okay. All right. But how much fun were you having during those Laker days? I mean, it was that was the highlight of uh, of fun, right? Well, I mean, we knew it was a business first. I mean, we knew it was the brand. You know, we knew we had to win. You know, look. There was no social media. There was no tweeting. There was no, and you know it was the '80s, uh, and it was you know it's, it was it was a lot of fun, you know, um, and teams were like rock stars, you know, when when, it, when when Magic showed up, and you know that was it. When you know when the Celtics showed up, you know that was it. So it was some fun times, you know, nothing too dangerous, but there were there were some fun times, and something we can reminisce on. Do you have a good Pat Riley story for us? Did you ever get on his wrong side? Everybody could get on Pats. All you had to do was just have, you know, one bad defensive play, you know, and, and Pat would, you know, that was his thing. He was, he was king preparation, and he was king recognizing personalities, and he was king at knowing how to push you. I mean, he would push you to the, to the edge. I mean, sometimes he would say, you know, Magic, you know, there's nothing mystical about you tonight. You know, you turn the ball over, you know, Byron, you know, he would say, you know, you're not, you know, you're, you're not doing anything. And, you know, worthy, you're, you're worthless tonight. And then he would look at Kareem and, you know, you know, say, you know, Kareem, what would you like to do tonight? You know, so, so he knew, he knew who to push. He knew how to back up. He knew, you know, how to get the maximum out of you. And so he was king at preparation and film and uh, was a big key to, 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 to getting us ready. We had magic on the floor, but, you know, Riles was the general. Fair to say that Michael Jordan tried to bully you at North Carolina? He did. He didn't try. He did. And not only me, he was, you know, he kind of bullied everybody. That was, that, I remember a recruiting trip uh, weekend. He showed up on a Friday and, you know, the elevator doors opened and all you could hear was, you know, this is mine. This is all going to be mine. You know, this guy was just full of confidence. Wasn't arrogant. And so we started the season and I was, you know, the best guy on the team at the time. We had Sam Perkins and Michael was a rookie, so he always sought out the best, whether it was backgammon, cards, or wh whatever. He always sought out the best, and, you know, I'd be trying to exhaust it. I'd be walking off the floor, and he'd just kind of cut me off. Where are you going, young fella? You know, he'd want to play one-on-one, -on -one and he, you know, he had to get to the point where he could beat me, and eventually he got there. 
What else was he doing? Did you like it, or did you think it was normal, or was it bothering I, I, you? I, 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 I thought I loved it and respected it because I knew he was competitive. You know, he was my teammate, a freshman. I was like, yes, this is what we need to, to win. We need somebody tough, somebody you can go in the, in the foxhole with. And, you know, he was still learning the game. I mean, I can remember him dunking on Sam Perkins and I. Like, I was like, whoa, who is this guy? But he always wanted to be the, the best, you know. Uh, we had these running groups, A, B, and C. And Michael was in B, which was a little bit slower time than the – quick point guards and they and they would always tease him about oh you have a slower time and you you have 10 more seconds to make your time and he asked coach to put him in a just to show those guys that he could do it and he and he beat him and he would always want to be the best at everything if he lost a game in backgammon in the dorm room you know we're just you know hanging out playing backgammon it really bothered him so he has this innate competitiveness, no matter what he's doing, golf, conversation, cards, whatever it is, even if it's friendly, at some point, it's going to get really competitive with MJ. Nice talking to you, James. Good to see you. Were you taking a nap there? No, no, I was just listening. I was just okay. listening. I wasn't thinking. He was enough. waiting for the Showtime Lakers story that we never got <laughs> yeah, again I mean, for the second know, time. Yeah, you fine. would have stirred him if you'd actually given us something on that front. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, never. We're going to go the rest of our life. You still can't hear us. This I earphone, understand. It, right. it goes on. Yeah, you know. I understand. It comes in yeah. and out at weird times. I get that cash forever, ever. I blow that money forever, ever. Ride in that coupe forever, ever. Hang out the brain forever, ever. <coughs> All the fame forever, ever. I get them racks forever, ever. I get them racks forever, ever. I'm in designer forever, ever. Hell yeah, forever, ever. I saw them birds forever, ever. I rep the city forever, ever. I rep my city forever, ever. Yeah. Highly questionable. This broadcast from the Clevelander Hotel on beautiful South Beach, Miami. Time to play the game that doesn't think it is a good idea for Dan to go anywhere near than open flame. You look a little bit greasy down there. Really? Yeah. Do you question? You give us topics and events. We question. Do you question following your shot? All right. Do you go to West Valley High School? Because this might be from your high school. We don't know which West Valley High School it is, but it's one of them. So tune in to see if it's your friend. Oh. Oh, Whoa, yeah. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> That is not the attire to wear while trying. Well, the issue is not the attire. Um, oh. It was the whole plan. I, he could have been out there wearing an Air Droid jumpsuit, and it would not have mattered uh, in terms of how this whole thing ended. Uh, wow. Yeah. Wow is a good, a good it, way to do it. But you know the part that. that makes me feel the oldest? The fact that he could get up. Right, because if I were to fall down in a circumstance like that, we're calling 911, folks. Well, two hand dunks are always dangerous, you know? Oh, you another one? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> all right. How many do we have? Uh, in look at us <laughs> doing our part for gender equity. Do you question the tranquility of retirement? Uh, we are going out to Scotland, where we find one Marshawn Lynch, who was not busy losing Ooh, the playoffs. Will he be talking to the natives? Please Let's, tell me he's talking to the natives. Let's see. Oh, no, he's just popping willies down the street. Oh, my God, Marshawn. Marshawn! <laughs> I feel like he forgot what side of the street they do things on um, over here in Scotland. Now, um, if we could please get to the part where he talks to the natives, because I just, I just, I feel like they'll all be speaking the same language, but not speaking the same language at all. And I think that would be more entertaining than that wheelie. I feel like what we just witnessed was less dangerous than what he used to used to do for a living, trying to carry a ball 300 times. Fair point. Well, that bus was going to run through his face. Oh yes, yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, that's right. Does that allow us to play that video? Can we I just play that so. video? Let's just play that video because it's great video to play. Let's play. If it. you just run through somebody's face, a lot of people ain't gonna be able to take that over and over and over and over and over again. They're just not gonna want that. I think there's a deeper metaphor there. Run through a <laughs> face. <laughs> By the way, if you have leather on your cap, you're required to wear an African medallion. It's science. 
do you question if this was a success? Just guessing it's not. That, I mean, I don't know anything about it. All right, yeah, I, if it's on I, our I show, doubt it. probably not. He's nearly here. He's not nearly here. Come on, you can do it. Yeah, man. Come on, you can do it. Bro. Oh, he's come, actually going to make it. Run, run. <laughs> Sounds like he's got a little tired. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Oh, oh. Wow. oh that's unfortunate. I got to admit, though, I was. Well, he made it. He made it. He, he did that's make right. it. That's right. He made it too. That's right. That's right. He made Bow. it. Bow. Right. Where we go? Boom. I, I, how drunk was he that he did not consider that part of it at all? And then, of course, the, you know, not moving. <laughs> well, it could have been worse. Look at this now. Oh, of course. My father, with my father, it's always, it could have been worse. Is that an old lady? No, oh, oh. oh no, no. <laughs> oh, there's, I do remember oh, this. Oh, really? So we've got this an entire great. montage of these. <laughs> So is this what you guys do, like when we don't have a show on today? Wow! Oh. This is the one. That's the one. Wow! Wow! <laughs> yeah, could have been worse. Do you question living in Florida? Have you seen this, Bomani? Have you seen this video? I haven't gotten past the question. I don't even know why we need video. All right, let's look at this video here. We call these lizards in South Florida. Lizards. These are tiny little animals. You hang them from your ears. Yo. Yeah. That's, uh, that's Shaq in a Celtics uniform. <laughs> Moving at about that speed. What species is that? Dinosaur? That's what I'm trying to say. I didn't know they had cameras back in BC. <laughs> yeah, what those people don't know is that that is showing off slow because it's going to come up behind them fast. Yeah, that's that's not what you want. By the way, um, in Texas, that video would have gone a little bit differently, involving gunshots. Well, you know why he's moving slow, don't you? Why is that? He just ate three golfers, man. Yeah, three yeah. golfers. See, he, had, he, yeah, had that, yeah. he had them for lunch. That yeah. was for lunch, you know? I will say this, though. If he ate three of them, two probably deserved it. Time to play the game that has an unusually large face. See? Oh, no. Is that me? That must it be ain't me. me. You tell us what to watch on television tonight. We tell you if we're intrigued or not. It's him. On ESPN, the Australian Open. Imagine being the fourth best person in the world at something, and you'd be feeling pretty good about yourself. And then you'd look up, and you'd look in the mirror, and you'd be Stan Warenka, and nobody would care that you're the fourth best in the world at something. Let's check in with Stan Warenka. Which one is he? Uh oh. Uh -oh. Ah! Right in the knee. Oof. <laughs> that is not Stan Warenka. Stan going over because That's he could have hit that anywhere. Four kills but it. it is. Oh, the fifth set, so he didn't want to take it. Oh, well, Rinka apologizing for that a little late. Bomani, are you intrigued? You know, it's good to know all around the world we're still making stands, right? Like, you would have thought that we would have stopped rolling stands off the assembly line, but oh, no, 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 no. We're still making stands. Poppy, are you intrigued? Oh, see, see, I'm very intrigued. Are you kidding me? It's Steve Johnson. He's a product of the USA, Orange County, California. You know, I'm telling you something. That guy is going to surprise the tennis world. You know, I'm telling you, that guy is going to have a hell of a, hell of a game. You know, I'm going to I'm, I'm, I'm only for a Steve Johnson, you know? USA, 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 USA. We ain't wasting that on no damn Steve Johnson. Watch your Johnson. On the Science Channel, what on earth? These are always interesting, right? There's no chance of this not being interesting. What do we have? NASA's Landsat 7 satellite captures an image of the Antarctic ice shelf. Something about these stains doesn't add up. Scientists expand their investigation to include the possibility the marks could be linked to the local wildlife. Biologists studying the distribution of the stains discover they line up perfectly with several vast colonies of emperor penguins made up of tens of thousands of individual birds. The higher resolution images make it clear how the penguins are causing the brown stains. What we're looking at here is penguin poo from space. 
It turns out that hundreds of thousands of penguins have left an indelible mark on the icy landscape in their poo. Yeah, they look cute, but they're disgusting. They're disgusting animals. Morgan Freeman already explained this to us once. Bomani, are you intrigued? So basically what you're saying there is that all the ice down there is community toilet paper. That's right. Which is the most disturbing thought that I've ever had in my... Yeah, from space. You can see it from space. Poppy, are you intrigued? Oh, see, see, I'm very intrigued. But listen, you know, those penguins, man, they got a mate. You know, can you imagine walking all over the place and poop no matter where you where you are, every place you want to be, you know? One one drop here, the other drop there. I know the one up there, you know, all over the place, you know? That's, that's the, like uh, living in a dream world. That's what you dream of. Yeah, that's that'd right. Be great. You know, no restrictions that, whatsoever. That'd be great. Live in the Arctic, you know. Nobody complaining degrees, about yeah, it. Below Every, zero. Everyone is in the same uh, boat. Yeah, you know? that's yeah, right. Let's yeah, poop. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Let's go. All right. <laughs> let's do it. Yeah. Let's do it. Don't do that. All right. <laughs> I'm so glad I don't have to do your laundry. Not sound like. It's a hell of a symphony. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my. That's all the time we have for today. Thank you for watching. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Gracias. See you mañana. I just poop right now. All right, that's great. Yeah. Again? Again. You can see it from a space, though. Can't see yours from space? You that's can right. smell it from space, though. <laughs>